Hey, Coach, so glad you made it to this video. Go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. You won't be disappointed. 14-day free trial. What can I say? It's my business. Check it out. Thanks. The following presentation on man specials is part of a six DVD instructional series called Offensive Sets for Success. All offensive sets are introduced by utilizing onboard diagrams followed by live game clip illustrations to showcase the execution of each scoring option. My goal in creating this series was that the end product would be something that coaches could actually use for their teams and for their programs. So often we, we're all frustrated when we go to a clinic and listen to some really excellent clinicians over the course of a Saturday or a Sunday or on a weekend and we listen all day and we hear great stuff and we jot down notes feverishly and we come up with some really, really good things and we have some great thoughts and there's great moments of clarity during those times. But by the time it transfers to your season, you just don't seem to be able to transfer much of the knowledge and much of the things that you gained to your kids. Probably because most of the presentations are done on overheads or they're done uh, on the floor with uh, no defense, five on zero against nobody, um, or the, the coaches aren't coaching their players, so the execution isn't to the point where, as the onlooker, you can actually trust it. Same thing is true of videos. You know, a lot of the video presentations that I've seen, although very good for certain things, don't really give me the trust that the execution is happening against live defense in a game setting where I can see the execution against a team that's prepared to beat them. So it is my hope through this process that you will have some trust in what we've done and you can see that it's been done against teams that are trying to beat us and have scouted us and that maybe you can find something to apply to your program and to your kids. Be prepared. Your kids are going to need you. I really believe that during the course of just about every single game that we play, there are some really key moments where the coach can be effective as a leader in helping their kids get through a troubled time offensively, a crucial, very pressure situation offensively where your kids need something more than just the continuity set that they've been running all year. And I think that's the job of the coach to make sure that there is something there to run and that there's a plan and that they're well aware of the fact that when there is a key possession or a crucial moment in the game that the coach is ready to put the best players in positions of their comfort to take a shot that they can make and help their team in those really key moments of the game. Play number five is a man special out of our handoff series. It really has nice action on both sides of the ball. It uh, forces the defense to do a nice job on the ball side as well as the weak side and make that transition rather quickly. Entry, generally with a down screen. Down screening, you could, you could enter on the right side of the floor. Certainly you could set it up on the left side of the floor. There's really no preference there, uh, depending upon the strength of your point guard and whether or not they handle it with both hands. Um, if the defense plays soft, certainly you could enter without the down screen. Um, I do have forwards on the perimeter right now, but certainly if you want to post your guards out of this or when you want your guards to be the cutters because they're your better finishers or you like a matchup you have in your favor, uh, it really doesn't matter how they're aligned. It's just in terms of what, what, which player you want to, to showcase with this, uh, with this particular play. Um, we're going to get the ball entered to the wing. At that point, the point guard is going to drive off the defender. Hard, straight line cut toward the basket. Then we break off the L-shaped cut, and we're going to get a handoff. Now as we're approaching the forward, the forward is protecting the ball and pivoting away from the defense. We're not offering the ball up in front of the defense and getting tied up with jump balls and things like that. Strong pivot. Point guard now has a handoff. We have our point guard with the ball. We have our forward here ready for their cut. Meanwhile, the guard is into the high post with the back screen. Our forward has two choices off this ball side back screen. 
Inside cut toward the basket or a wrap off the back side of that screen. We're just simply going in side to our cutter. In the first clip of our point number five handoff series, notice that our point guard drives his man into an L-shaped cut for the handoff. Our wing cutter has two choices, the inside cut or the cut over the top of the high post screener. He chooses the inside cut for the finish. Live speed clip to follow. In the second clip, our point guard once again does an excellent job of the drive and L-shaped cut to receive a safe handoff. Our wing makes the inside cut off the high post screen, receives the post pass, and finishes on the inside. In clip number three, our point guard is effective driving his man off and receiving a clean handoff. Our wing cutter chooses to wrap around the top side of the up screen. We have a wing to post pass a collapsing defense, and a weak side drop and finish. The second option on our ball side of play number five involves the high low. We're going to assume that the point guard made their hard, hard line cut toward the foul line and they're finished off the L-shaped cut, received the handoff on the wing. We've gone through with our forward to the post area. The forward has gone either on the inside cut or the forward has chosen to wrap it around the outside of the screen. At that point, from the back screening position, we fire with energy. That needs to be taught. Otherwise, your kids will wander and they'll drift out there and we'll really leave ourselves hung out to dry here on this pass, especially for teams to scout well. We're going to go ahead and get the ball into the high post area. Pivot strong, step off the defender and throw a high-low ball side post-entry pass. Our fourth game clip of this series showcases the high-low post pass. Our point guard receives a clean handoff. Our wing cutter wraps around the top of the up screen. We make a high post entry pass, followed by a high-low post pass, and he finish on the inside. In this sequence, we're going to move from the ball side action on play number five to the weak side. Again, we're going to assume that our point guard has made their hard line cut and L-shaped cut to get, receive the handoff. We're going to assume now that our forward has gone through either on the inside of the wrap cut to the low post area on their cut. We're going to assume now that after the screen, we now have two options for reversal. We found that if this player did not do a great job with their fire to make the pass into the high post to evaluate the high low. We found when they did a poor job and they drifted a little bit that we were turning it over. So we now gave them a choice. If they preferred to fire, they do, they do a nice job with the fire, they can go ahead and step it out hard and we'll reverse it into the high post. We also told them as they come out of their screen, if they show a fist to the point guard with the ball, that that would indicate that he was going to come and set a ball pick to help him dribble reverse the ball. In either case, if we fire, we evaluate the high low, that's not there, we swing it out of there. If we show the fist and we ball screen, which I tends to make me feel a little safer, we're going to go ahead and dribble the reversal and kick it. to our weak side player. Our weak side player turns around and throws it on the inside. Now, it just depends upon which player you want to isolate. You want to isolate a guard on the weak side with a, with, a, with a matchup advantage. You want to isolate a forward on the weak side with a matchup advantage. It's also important to note that as that ball is coming into the high post on the fire here, ball side, or as we're setting the ball pick to help get this ball reversed, there's interchanging going here on the weak side. We don't want these players standing. We want a lot of interchanges going on, on the weak side to occupy the defense, 
to keep the defense busy, get the defense a little bit disorientated. Gives the chance to pin the weak side post defender much deeper for a higher percentage shot. In our fifth clip, we introduce the weak side action. Our ball side action remains the same. In this case, our forward makes the inside cut. The ball goes into the high post. At that point, we get a weak side interchange to isolate our post player. And we go wing to post entry and finish on the inside. In our sixth clip, we'll continue with our weak side action. We enter the left wing. Our cut is a wrap cut over the top of the high post. We swing it. We have to work a little harder to get it inside with some ball fakes. We make a strong move and finish inside. More weak side action with clip number seven. Notice our postman on the weak side really getting big and getting against the body, making that post entry pass easy for our guard. In clip number eight, pay particular attention to our constant weak side interchanging. This keeps the defense moving, keeps them occupied, and also watch how hard we're willing to work to get the ball inside. Here we dribble, relocate, make a nice pass so we can get a post move inside. Coaches are in a situation more now than ever before with the increased use of technology to prepare and to scout. Uh, to really look at changing and tweaking your sets throughout the season. In this case, we had to turn our up screen into a ball screen to reverse the ball. We were really struggling with denial defenses. And in this case, we get a post entry and a put back. Bang, then we're gonna out. All right, bang out on three. One, two, three, bang, out. If you run play number five well and you really focus on the execution of both the ball side and the weak side, it really forces the defense to start bringing a lot of help because the spacing is really good, the ball movement if on time is really effective. And Hey coach, this won't be a polished video, um, but I wanted to get it up there. I want to get these videos up for you, especially basketball season right around the corner. So um, I hope you enjoy them. Uh, if you do, if you're a basketball coach, you're probably watching this, um, looking for resources, looking for some place. Go over and check out teachhoops.com up here or down there, um, and I guarantee you're not going to be disappointed. Go check it out for me. Thanks. And the defense is feeling as though it's got to guard both sides of the floor, which is really difficult for most lower-level teams, high school-level teams uh, to get done. So let's take a look at more weak side action. Again, we're going to assume that the point guard has made their hard line basket cut l shape been able to attain the handoff. We brought our weak side for or our ball side forward through. Okay, we don't have that option. Again, our, our, our back screener has two options for reversal. We can fire or we can ball screen. In either case, what we have happen when we get the ball in this area, let's say we had a fire this time and we fired the ball into the high post. We read the high low and that was not there. The weak side is interchanging now. So we've got the ball in the high post. As that's happening, we're pinning down in the post area. We're flashing to the wing. We may have exchanged maybe two or three times during the course of this process. But certainly when the ball is in the high post, we have to have movement at that point. We bring the ball into the high post and the whole defense just sags on the inside. So when we swing it around here to our wing player and we address the wing to post pass, the defense steps off three steps. We've got a high post pass to a weak side kick in a perimeter jump shot. Clip number 10 is executed quite well, starting with our point guard cut. We get a very nice inside cut here by our wing player. The ball screen is solid, and the sagging defense allows us to get the weak side jump shot. Clip 
number 11 will again showcase the weak side action of this set versus sagging defense designed to help in the post. We swing the ball through the high post, the defense sags, and we get a jump shot over the top. Continuing on with our weak side action for play number five. We've gone ahead and gotten the handoff with our point guard. Ball side cut was not available. Let's say we stepped out and set the ball reversal ball screen. Penetration. We're assuming the interchange on the weak side as we talked about, staying active. Kick the ball here off the penetration. Now meanwhile, keeping in mind that our low forward is posting up a body. So if the defense on the guard overcloses or plays soft or does anything to give this guard the confidence to take his man off of this play, we really talk to our forwards, or our, not even our forwards, we really talk to our, 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 our post player in this case, who's posting up, to really get against the body and continue to post into a body and post this man regardless of what this guard does because if we decide to drive the ball, which in this case we're going to, we're driving the ball right to the basket and the help has a really difficult time getting there in time to really do anything besides decide to give up the layup or foul. So we get the weak side drive and the post seal. Watch closely in clip number 12 as our weak side post player moves down to the post area, gets against the body, and shields the driving space for our guard to finish uncontested. More weak side action now out of play number five with the post entry and the give and go cut. We're taking care of our ball side action. We're going to go ahead and this time we're going to go ahead and step out and fire for ball reversal. Pass the outside shoulder. The weak side interchanging that we've been talking about to occupy the defense has taken place. We throw the outside shoulder pass to our guard right on time as he spaces outside the three-point line. Our forward is pinning down against the body inside nice and deep. We're able to get a post entry pass inside to our post isolation on the weak side. And in doing so, many teams, a lot of teams have a lot of different philosophies on how to double the post. We short slide to keep vision of the ball and the man. Some teams turn and double team. Some teams there doesn't seem to be a method whatsoever about how they do it. You're going to beat them on the give and go if they turn, if they turn and collapse without vision. So if I've got a defender here and we go inside and he turns with no vision, we'll go ball, we'll go post entry on the wing, we'll run the basket cut and have a nice give and go right here for a finish in the lane. Foot number 13 showcases our weak side action. We get a wing to post entry and a nice give and go cut for the finish. Last action sequence for our play number five handoff series. We're going to assume that our ball side action has taken place um, on, our, on our wrap cut or our inside cut. We're going to assume that we swung the ball um, through a fire along the lane line. We've gotten the ball to the weak side. We make our post entry pass. And the nice thing about five is that it really keeps things spread out. You heard them in the post a couple times, whether it be on the ball side or the weak side, and they just start collapsing like crazy to try to prevent that. And now the kick outs and the spot ups and the swing opportunities are there. So we're into the post. And we, and we do really emphasize with our, with our players that we are isolating in the post, whether they be a guard or a forward, we do uh, really emphasize with them that they do not hold it down there. If they're going to go and score, then they ought to go score right off the catch. If they're going to pass it back out, that needs to happen quickly, but no holding. And so we get the ball inside of the post. We can kick it back out here and swing it for spot-up opportunities. We can look over the shoulder, depending upon where the double team, if there is a double team, where it's coming from. We can kick it back to the top for a shot 
or a swing. So basically you're just looking at quick kickouts, swings, and jump shot opportunities off of the kickout. Clip number 14 illustrates what can happen if you maintain your spacing throughout the course of the set. You get the ball reversed through a pretty solid ball screen. We're into the post area, and our weak side spacing is excellent, creating the drive and kick opportunity for the jump shot. Up is our next man special, and like play number five, it does have multiple options. We start out with a four high set. We're going to take our point guard at the, in the middle of the floor and we're going to dribble our point guard wing extended. As that's happening, again, the whole guard forward thing is just a matter of who you want to put where based on the strengths of your players. As we're dribbling the wing extended, we run a basket cut with ball vision. In the unlikely event that that vacated wing area would create a basket cut that would create a scoring opportunity, great. It didn't happen very often for us, but certainly you don't want to have this player cutting without seeing the ball. At that point, we have our point on the wing with the ball. Our cutter now turns into a diagonal. Up screener for the weak side post isolation. It's important that this person set up their cut. If they want to come high, they should set it up low and vice versa. If they want to go low, they should set it up high. We end up getting a post entry pass from our point to our weak side flash. We get a nice isolation right there, post entry. First option on up. First option out of this set showcases a diagonal up screen for a post isolation. We get the ball inside, the defense does not maintain the double team, we make a nice post moving finish. In clip number two, we take advantage of the low post entry again through our diagonal up screen. Our post player is going to penetrate, draw the defense, and kick for the weak side jump shot. This time we're right back into the post and we're looking for a forward screener slip. Point guard has dribbled the wing extended. We've brought our cutter into the screening position. Forward flashes down, receives the ball in the low post area. Sometimes now, again, you're scouted well, teams anticipate, and you can't get the ball as low in the, in the low post as you would like, and you get pushed out into the, either the mid post area, or sometimes you get pushed out into what would be considered short corner. Sometimes you're posting a kid that's not very physically tough, and they don't want to fight for that position. But they're pretty darn crafty down there in terms of being able to finish, so you're still running this option through that kid. In either case, the catch sometimes ends out a little further away than what you would like and it's not all bad because the spacing is kind of nice uh, off the ball as you'll, as you'll find out. We end up getting the short corner <clears throat> post catch. Our up screener then is receiving the screen the screener action to the top and what we get is a slip by our, by our, by our screening forward at the top we get a slip right in here and we go post to slip screener. In clip number three, watch for our post player to be ridden out to the baseline for the catch and also our forward screener slipping the middle for a catch, a spin move, and finish. Our second scoring option off of up involves a post entry and a give and go cut. Our point guard has dribbled the wing extended. Our wing players run their basket cut. Ends up in the back screening area right here. We're going to bring our forward 
to the post area. We're going to post enter on time here with flash. And then we're assuming that this defender is concerned about the post player or just gets lost a little bit like a lot of players do when their man gives up the basketball then that's time to rest and, and not pay attention. And let's, we're assuming they get their head turned around a little bit and after the post entry pass we're going to get a hard basket cut and a give and go to our point guard on that cut. Staying with our post entry option of this set, the ball goes inside off the diagonal up screen, and then we get a nice point guard give and go and drop for our weak side perimeter player. Next is the screen the screener perimeter action of this set. Again, our point guard has dribbled the wing extended. Our guard has made the basket cut and is now in the diagonal up screening position. Our forward makes it cuts to the post area. At this point we get our, our screen the screener action right here at the top of the circle. Our diagonal back screen then is followed by a screen the screener action at the top. We take our shooter right off of that screen. For a jump shot at the top. Clip number five showcases the screen the screener action of this set. The diagonal up screener will then receive a down screen for the jump shot at the top. Back to our perimeter action of screen the screener at the top of the circle. Point is dribbled, the wing extended, we have the forward flash in the low post. Our up screener is about to receive the screen the screener action at the top. Hey coach, I'm glad you found us here at YouTube. Please check us out all over at teachhoops.com up here, down here. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Free newsletter, 14 day free trial if you want to join. Um, go check out all the resources. You, you cannot beat the deal of teachhoops.com. You know, you buy a video, it's 20, 30 bucks for one video. We got a vast majority of them. Anything that a basketball coach would need. So go check it out, teachhoops.com, for coaches who want to get better. We've seen the jump shot off of that screen the screener action. This would be just the next sequence in line. If we can't get the jump shot at the top, we tell our screener to just turn right around and follow the cutter. So we cut to the top, receive the ball, we turn right around and follow and set a ball pick at the top for our shooter to then attack that screen, get a pull-up jump shot maybe right there, and then also a possibility of drawing the defense there and kicking to a spot-up shooter in the corner. Game clip number six. Again, we'll be staying with our screen the screener action. Our natural progression then from the jump shot at the top will be a left-hand dribble into the gap, drawing the defense, and kicking to a wide-open corner shooter. In game clip number seven, our guys do a great job of maintaining their aggressiveness through all options of this set. We get a corner kick. No shot there, right back to the shooter, we get into a gap and end up with a pull-up jump shot. In this next option, we're going to misdirect a little bit. The defense is getting used to us moving from right to left with our options, both inside and out. 
and we're going to misdirect a little bit and get the ball back inside on the ball side. We dribble the wing extended. We've got our cutter into the back screening uh, position in the diagonal, off of his diagonal cut. Our forward now is down into the post area. We're going to go ahead and take our back screener off our screen the screener action. And instead of getting the shot at the top of the circle or receiving the second ball screen to attack this weak side, we're going to go ahead and throw back to our point on our ball side and in a very timely fashion get the ball back in the post area. Clip number eight is unique in the sense that our shooter coming off the screen to screen action at the top does not swing the ball right to left. He comes back to the ball side. We're allowed to repost and get a quality shot opportunity out of the post area. This last option is just basically the kids having the liberty and taking the liberty to um, make a play on their own when you know teams scout you and you know you've done a nice job handling your 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 options off of your your special inside and out and you know they just start to cheat stuff and all of a sudden the most obvious guy gets a shot not having to really do anything uh, too creative to get the shot. Um, got our point back on, up on top to illustrate it. We're going to go ahead and dribble the wing extended. Defense, according to the scouting report, knows that the point's going to pick the ball up at that point. Look to evaluate the low post and then the screen the screener action. Well in this case we just run a little hesitation move here and if these defenders guarding all of our action in the paint don't want to pay attention we might just put a little hesitation move on, re-explode and get down here for a finish or maybe a short pull up from 10 feet or so. In clip number nine our point guard does a great job of aborting the normal flow of the play putting a little hesitation move on and then exploding to a short jump shot on the baseline. Fist is our next man special. It is a post ISO special. We're trying to create a situation where our isolated posts are very, very difficult to double down on. What you have is you've got your forwards, your posts, or anybody who you think has, you has a post advantage against the opponent. We've posted guards out of here. We've posted forwards out of here. We've played, we've run point guards down there indirectly at times. Um, we're trying to create this weak side situation to be a no help zone. We're looking for a down screen, a back screen and step out. Uh, we've even dribbled entered to get into this. If the defense plays soft, obviously none of that's necessary. But basically what you're going to do is get the ball entered to your wing. And then you want to empty out this side with cuts. So you're going to cut your point through to the corner. You're going to bring this low guard through into the safety position. The higher the better. Totally clear out that area. Now, we tell these guys, when the smoke clears with this action, you really need to get on the inside foot and get the leverage against your defender. Not a push off, but get on the inside foot, chop the feet, get into the high post with some, with some energy and with some fire so that we may be able to throw this high post pass to the outside shoulder. Now this execution piece is kind of big once you've been scouted because we're really not doing any screening to, to try to get this catch to happen. So this cut, the timing of it not being early is important. We want to let this action clear and we want to get the ball side totally spread before we make the cut. And this leverage is very, very key. Now when the ball is on its way into the high post, we are isolating the person that we think has the matchup. And we are getting into this first hash low block area, sometimes as far as right across the middle of the lane and we're going with our high post catch and a high low 
feed to our isolated posts. There's just no backside help there. The only way to bring help would be to bring the help off the high post. The high post defender would be come down, could come down, or you have to run from quite a distance to try to bring that backside help. So it's a nice isolation. In clip number one of this set, pay particular attention to the high post cutter. Notice that he does not cut until all the action is clear on the ball side, opening up the high post and making the high-low post pass rather easy. In clip number two, it's important to note that our wing passer makes a strong ball fake back to the top before passing the ball into our high post. We get a nice high-low pass and finish. In clip number three, we're highlighting our ball fake again. And this time, we're going to ball fake to the corner, make a nice pass on time to our high post flash, a good high-low pass, and strong move. Clip number four showcases two ball fakes. Our wing player will make a strong fake to the baseline, a nice fake back to the top, enter the ball in the high post, get a high-low post pass, and finish on the inside. Clip number five showcases this set against the matchup zone. Watch how the top defender on the weak side of the zone has to drop down in the post area, giving us a major matchup advantage in the post. Next, we're dealing with sagging or double teaming out of our high post area. Again, we can down screen to get into it. If they sag, just go straight wing entry. Point guard through, deep in the corner, safety, fire, the higher the better. I'm going to go ahead and get time it, wait, make sure the smoke clears on the ball side. Get your leverage. Make your pass into the high post on the outside shoulder with some pace on it, no drifters in the high post. Step your isolated post person into the post position and now what we're getting is we're getting sagging defense off of the high post or we're getting very quick double teaming in from the high post into our low post area so we get the high post catch we throw the high low post pass and there is a very quick drop off with the post defense so we just simply return, high post just steps in, we get a return pass from the low post for the short jump shot in the high post. Clip number six demonstrates excellent timing, strong ball fake, a high low post entry, and kick back to the high post player for a jump shot. Again, we're dealing with sagging defense out of our high post area. Point entering to the wing, getting through to the corner. Safety fire as high as possible. Get on the inside foot. Nice leverage on our cut. Catch the ball in the high post area. Just no respect for the mid-range jump shooter. Just knocked on the jump shot right from 15, 16 feet away. In our seventh clip, pay particular attention to the defender of our high post flash. He's caught between guarding the jump shot in the high post and helping out on a strong post player who can finish off the high low. This time, let's look at a couple options against pressure and denial defense in the high post. We're going to go ahead and start out this play 
with the entry. The entry pass has already been made. The point guard is already vacated to the corner. We've already brought our, our other guard out as our safety valve. And we're making our break into the high post area. Again, well scouted, simple, pretty simple play, easy to scout. Defense is overplaying and really challenging that high post catch. At that point, we're looking for a loop. We're looking for our forward flasher to recognize that pressure, continue on through in a looping fashion toward the basket, throw the lead pass, and either finish off the loop cut or drop it for the isolated post player on the roll. Clip number eight showcases what we call the loop cut. It's designed to beat ball pressure and denial in our high post area. Because of denial pressure, our high post loops through, catches the ball, and drops to a wide open teammate. More options against pressure defense. We're going to go ahead and loop again, but this time we're going to replace and stay with our high-low concept. We've gone ahead and entered the ball to the wing, point guard through to the corner. Safety valve guard up at top. We make our cut into the high post area against pressure. Denial defense in that area. We're going to go ahead and loop. But in this case, we don't receive the ball from our wing player on our loop. So we continue on through, realizing that now as the loop player, we're turning into the future post isolation. So we loop through. The original isolated post has been, been trained to watch. And if we start to loop, we've got to follow and replace the high post off of that loop. So we're looping through, we're replacing in the high post. Hey coaches, so glad you made it over here on, on YouTube and watching some videos. Um, if you do like basketball, obviously you're a basketball coach because you're here, um, check out teachhoops.com. Um, it's a free resource. There's a, like, there's a cute, great blog that we're just starting. Um, lots of great resources. I um, mean, sign up for our newsletter. You check out our community. It's a 14-day free community um, for coaches who want to get better. So check it out. Nothing off your skin. All right, enjoy the, enjoy the show. Now we're open because of the timing of it. We've got our catch in the high post off of the loop and replace, and now it's high-low. Off the loop and replace. Clip number nine. We loop and replace and stay right with our high-low sequence. More options for your kids versus pressure defense. We've shown both the loop and finish and the loop and replace. We've gone ahead and entered, cleared our point guard to the corner, brought our safety out top. We bring our cut into the high post. Trouble getting the ball into the high post, don't want to turn it over. We just exercise our corner option. Corner option, post ISO through. Still just as difficult to get the backside help available. So we end up actually trying to lob. We set up on the baseline for the bounce pass, or depending upon if they play it low with defense right here, we don't mind lobbing it toward the middle of the lane because there's just no backside help in there. Clip number 10 showcases another option we have against denial defense in the high post. Our high post does not loop, so we throw through to the corner and isolate our post player anyway. This is our last option versus pressure. Our safety option. Entered the ball to the wing, gotten our point guard through to the corner. Our safety fires out here hard. 
We're breaking into the high post area. Congested, don't want to risk it. No one's guarding our safety, at least they're not denying it to our safety. So we're able to go to our safety position. We've mentioned many times we'd like our safety position to come as high as possible. Bring it out on the floor. Go all the way to half court if you need to. So now we get our catch way high on the floor and we're able, even if we need a relocation dribble right here, we're able to get the ball into the high post. By this time, the high post player is probably against the body, ceiling, showing a hand, stepping out and catching the ball, maybe a bounce pass into the high post. Get our catch, duck our post in for the isolation, and go high-low out of the safety option. But number 11 showcases what we call the safety variation. The ball will not be entered into the high post flash by the wing player. It will be passed back out to what we call the safety, into the high post, and then finally on the high-low to our post isolation. Clip number 12, our guys do a great job of maintaining composure. The defense is trapping and there's some pretty good pressure. We use the safety option, go into the high post, a nice give and go option off our high low entry. We end up getting a stick back and a short jump shot at the end of the quarter. Play number three is our next perimeter special. It features a screen the screener action on the perimeter. We need our point guard to come down the floor and establish one side of the floor or the other. The shooter then will read the side of the floor that's been established and go to the opposite side of the floor. Point guard in this case is established. The left side of the floor is, is our point of entry. We're going to dribble and establish that one side so that we may set up the ball screen angle for our shooter. Our shooter sets the ball screen. Point guard takes it off the ball screen strong. As that's happening, our backside forward is timing this and is already in the area. And we are screening for the screener at the top of the circle. Our point guard is going to pick up the ball in a timely fashion. We're going to banana our cutout here just a little bit as the shooter so that there is an angle to step in to that jump shot at the top of the circle. Screen the screener for the jump shot at the top. Our first clip illustrates the first option of this set. It's screen the screener action for the spot up jump shot. In our second clip, we're also looking for the screen the screener action and a jump shot at the top. In clip three, watch closely as our screener does just an outstanding job of a late half slide to get some contact on the defender that's going to threaten our shot. Let's take a look at some continued action off our play number three. In this case, we're going to get 
our shooter in a position to be a playmaker off of the catch looking for penetration based on how the defense plays him. Again, our point guard is going to establish his side. In this case, our point guard establishes the left side of the floor by dribbling the left side, taking it nice and deep before changing directions to head sharply off the screen. Meanwhile, our forward, as this action is taking place, is cleaning up right behind the initial screen for the screen, the screener action at the top. We banana cut just a little bit with our shooter so that when we throw the pass to the shooter, they're stepping in on the shot. Now in this case, there is no shot. Depending upon how the defense plays us, we come off, it's well scouted, there's no shot opportunity. Our shooter gets on the penetration right off the catch. We get a baseline back cut and finish off the screen the screener, penetrate, and drop to the baseline cutter. In clip four, our shooter once again comes off the screen, puts the ball on the floor, draws the defense, and drops it off to the baseline cutter. Our next option, we get more penetration and playmaking out of our shooter. Once again, we've established the side of the floor with our point guard so that we may come off the ball screen with an effective angle. Our forward again at that point is timing it up and cleaning up the screen, the screener action. Our shooter makes that a little bit of a banana cut so that we can step in and shoot. We're ready to shoot. Maybe we receive a switch. Maybe they get through it. It's a poor screen. In any case, we have to put the ball on the floor once again. We're into this gap as the shooter. We've already demonstrated the baseline back cut. In this case, we're going to get the screener slipping and rolling toward the basket and creating a nice passing lane for our shooter who is penetrating. In game clip five versus the matchup zone, it becomes pretty obvious that our opponent's done a nice job of scouting. Our shooter makes the adjustment, puts it on the floor, drops it off to our rolling screener for the finish. In our next illustration, I'd like to mention that it's important to keep your sets simple for your kids. If they're going to learn them and execute them, if you get too complicated with that type of thing, it takes you too much of your season to be successful with a set and for your kids to be confident. At the same time, if your sets are simple, you're easier to scout and you're easy to prepare for in terms of um, individual game preparation. So your kids need to know how to react to based on how the defense plays them. This play is very simple. You can see, if you see us play one time and we run this play, that the design of the play is some screen the screen reaction on the perimeter. We're looking for a three-point shot off of that action. Now, teams start to jump that and switch that and press that. So your kids need to be taught during the course of your practice sessions where the other options are. We showed the penetration options. At this point, I'd like to show um, a simple slip in point guard delivery to our uh, rolling forward. We establish a side of the floor with our point guard so that we may come off at the proper angle. We establish the left side. Point guard takes it nice and wide. Our screen the screener action is taking place on the top as usual. And again, we're talking about teams that have scouted this piece of it. They've seen us hurt other teams with the three-point shot. And now we are approaching our screen, and at times we'll slip it before we even make any contact. And we'll slip our forward right down the center, and we'll get a point to forward roll. This is also very effective against zone or matchup zone defenses. In clip six, watch closely for our screener to slip the middle for a layup against this matchup zone. Was that us? In clip seven, watch closely as advanced scouting hurts the opponent. 
The defender guarding the ball screen refuses to show so that he may guard the jump shot, allowing for a free driving lane down the center. Three ten left first half. Listen, be spinning on Dominic. Scoop and a foul count for Jazz. Listen, be what a move. Clip eight, the on-ball defender is taking chances and is clearly not containing. Our point guard aborts the play, gets in the lane, and drops for the screener for the finish. A thought to keep in mind when coaching your kids and coaching your program is that in the end, it's not about us. It's about the kids. It's about planning for their strengths. It's about taking that team that you have this season and doing what you can to put those players in the best position to succeed based on their strengths. I think many times, I shouldn't say many times, but I think at times coaches get, get a little bit, and I know I get this way, where you, we know what we know and we know what's worked in the past and we know what we prefer from our comfort perspective. We know the offenses and defenses that we've been accustomed to and we wanna, we, we wanna go that direction. We wanna show our kids that same stuff year after year. But our, our challenge and our responsibility is to take our current players and do what we can do from a leadership perspective to help them succeed. Hey, Coach. I'm glad you found us on YouTube. Um, I hope you enjoy the basketball uh, drill that's coming up. If you are here, you're probably a basketball coach. I want you to go check us out over at teachhoops.com, up here or down there. I don't think you'll be disappointed. 14-day free trial if you just decide to join lots and lots and lots and lots of great resources. So go check it out, um, and I hope you enjoy the drill. Thanks.